I'm here with Ann. We're going to talk about what most people's roofs are made of, yeah. starting with the plywood base that's underneath the shingles and the underlayment. Yeah, most people have never had this view, right? Um, but this is what's underneath those shingles that are on top of your house. Um, and, and notice there's a gap right, between yeah. those two pieces of, of plywood. So if this is all you had for your roof, obviously that leaves you very vulnerable to water and, and other things getting through those gaps. It does. So you it need does. something on top of that. You absolutely need something on top of that because that's, that's a pretty big hole. It looks kind of like my kitchen colander. And yet it has to be there mm -hmm. um, for the wood to be able to move naturally. So what do most roofs have on top of this plywood and how is it typically installed? So on top of the plywood, you'll have some underlayment. The next layer is the underlayment, um, and Chris is going to put that on top of the roof there for us. Um, and then the, the idea here is that on a typical house, uh, the roofing contractor is going to put that down, maybe with some staples, just enough uh, to hold it in place before you get the shingles on. How thick is the typical underlayment that's used? Right, this is a, a 15 pound um, felt, which is um, the typical amount. Um, and we'll see here in a minute, we're gonna recommend something a little stronger. Okay. So how do, the, how do most underlayments get attached to the roof? Most underlayments are gonna get attached to the roof with staples. Um, in kind of a just a pattern big enough to, to keep it on before you install the shingles. Yeah, so let's take a look at how that would mm -hmm. be done. Here we go. How your roof is put together in a typical fashion. Now it sounds impressive and it looks like it's pretty well attached, but yeah. what are the weaknesses of that method of putting the underlayment on? So the weakness here is that um, a staple is pretty thin and it's just, it's put on there quickly in order to keep it on long enough so you can get other things on it. Um, you can see some of the staples are sticking up just a little bit. All that's keeping it down is that thin metal staple. So how would you recommend that it be done better? So the stronger way, um, first as we look here at the plywood, we have tape. Um, so we have taped over the, the hole that makes it look like a colander. It, we still allow the wood to, to move back and forth. Because those gaps need to be there, right? The gaps have to be there so that the wood can contract and expand. Um, but we've put a barrier here so that if this was totally exposed, the water's gonna roll off and it's not gonna get down into the hole. Um, so this is the first thing that you have to have, first line of defense. We also recommend a bit stronger of an underlayment. So in this particular side, Chris is going to put two layers of 30 pound felt. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look at that thicker underlayment and let's see how he attaches it to the plywood this time. Yep, so this is the thicker and you can feel the difference. Um, you can feel that this one's thicker and it sure meets can. ASTM standards and he's going to attach it with button cap nails. Now, it sure looks like he did that at particular intervals. <laughs> he doesn't did. look like an accident, the pattern. No, the pattern is not an accident. Um, so what you've got here is approximately six inches um, between on the edges and 12 inches in between in the middle. A lot more fasteners, and each fastener has a better grab on the material because it has a button cap. So if we were to pretend that we were wind, yeah. and we were to try to take off the underlayment, do you think it would be harder for the wind to take this off than this? Absolutely, let's give it a try. Can I give it a try? Yeah, can I for cause it. destruction? I can become the hurricane? Hurricane Why, Nab, right should here. Should I try the weak one first? Sure, go for okay. it. Okay. Oh, that was, that was too easy. It, that, that doesn't make me feel too good about no, that. No, it comes right off. That stuff is thin and it comes right off. All right, so All you right, dare me to try. destroy this underlayment. You right? will be able to, but it'll take a lot more work. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like trying to open that <laughs> Christmas present that is wrapped a little too well. I can it, only make some tears in it. I can't really yeah. pull the whole thing off very easily. Maybe that's about the best I can do is tear it. Is that what real world wind could do with shingles on top of this kind of underlayment, tear it but not take it all off? This is exactly the point. Um, and you saw the strength, the difference here, um, and that this particular button cap that's right here at the edge 
Look at him holding on. And look you how much <laughs> damage maybe right. that that prevented that this did not. Absolutely. So this is going to have a much better chance of staying on your roof, and the water will run off of this. Um, this prevents water from coming down. So the more you can keep it on your roof, the better off you're going to be.